Yeah, look at that. It's like smoothly increasing. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, so let's all be honest, right? As kids, did we all just think of space as like this grand big thing? Like, I'm okay, I'm not saying space is a small thing, obviously, right? But what I mean by that is like every single time I heard about space, it was always about, you know, like the first man to ever go to space or like the first man to step foot on the moon or whatever. But bro, literally, like, I think like when I was like 14, like three years ago, I, I, I like learned this. People just go to the International Space Station. <laughs> like, obviously not just the average person. But what I mean is like, it, it was so crazy to me how people just do that. Like, people just like can fly to the space station. And there's like, like seven of them or like eight of them. And then also the fact that like when I was younger and we'd like fly on planes, there was this one time where like the plane flew like really high, right? And it's like, I would look on the, on the window and it's like the entire sky looked dark. Like we literally were like, it looked like we were like almost flying in space basically. And that like terrified me genuinely. I don't know why it was just some like weird, like instinctual fear. And yeah, like there was a video where like a guy just fell from space. Like he was just in space, right? And then he just like jumped down and he just like fell down to earth. Do you understand what that means? And ever since I got this epiphany, okay, I literally just began to realize like nothing else matters but this, okay? Like if you don't know how many people are in the International Space Station at any given time, what are you even doing with your life? You know what I mean? But the thing is like as someone who plays Roblox, right? It's like I can't play Roblox and check the amount of people at the International Space Station. I can't do that. So a lot of developers are very like inconsiderate when it comes to this, right? So they, they, they don't just think of the obvious thing which is just to you know add a billboard which showcases the amount of astronauts in space right like if more games had this i guarantee roblox stock would go up by like 200 percent okay but they don't because they're stupid and as always i'm the guy who comes here and fixes things like i don't mean to brag but i'm pretty sure that i single-handedly basically just revived the roblox like developer community on youtube but okay look boring stuff aside here's the fun part here's like the meat and bones of the okay not not bones because like, nobody likes bones except dogs i guess but you're not a dog right you're probably not a dog so uh, the meat of the video basically right what i'm thinking we do and this is going to be a very simple solution i know i said billboards blah 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 but look that's for like adopt me developers okay i don't have adopt me money yet i'm getting close right <laughs> basically what i'm thinking we can do is we can just make a part okay very simple part which i will call uh space station uh change no uh, and then i'll add a script because obviously if we want something to change you know in the game we should use a script for it you know that makes sense and so now what what now genuinely okay how do we get okay so what do we want we want actual like uh, live real-time data of astronauts or maybe just anything else just anything uh, regarding like the space station or space in general how do we get that <laughs> what do we do this is where we use something called an api okay i don't even know what that stands for i'll be honest but basically from my rough understanding of apis because i'll be honest bro i don't deal with apis i just deal with you know roblox development an api you can think of it as like a website that contains data and so really all we need to do is we just need to find an api or a website that has real real-time data of you know astronauts and then all we need to do is just inside of this script we just need to consistently get that data and then just you know do something with that data now easier said than done obviously how do we get that data and what what website do we even use like where do we find the data that we're looking for well i found this website and in fact this is actually the website that roblox uh, uses in their documentation and so here it has two apis okay it has the uh international space station location literally it has like it has the location of the space station that's amazing and the people in space right now so this is the number of people in space at this very moment okay if I click on the ISS location, right, as you can see, it just gives us a table. This is literally just a table. It has the ISS position, which is equal to a table. It has the timestamp, which is equal to a number, and the message, which is equal to a string that says success. And people in space has the same thing. It's longer, but basically message is equal to success. People is equal to this table that has other tables inside of it. And then number is equal to seven. And so I assume this is the number of people inside the space station. Now do note that this actually is real time, right? Like for example, let's check the latitude. Latitude is negative 26 point, uh, 3615. Like, like keep an eye out on this. I'm going to refresh, right? Look at that. Every single time I refresh, the numbers change. So this is actually real time. And so now the question becomes, okay, that makes sense. How do we actually get this table? How do we get this data in our actual game? Okay. And let me actually ask you a quick question. Something called HTTP service comes in. So game HTTP service, fairly simple. Okay. Basically what this service allows me to do is to get async, right? Basically, this will return the actual table once we give it a URL. So we're going to give it the web address we're requesting data from, which in this case is this. So I'm going to copy this, right? And then I'm going to paste it over here. And then we'll just turn this into a variable, which I'll call data like so. However, here's the problem. 
If I try and print this data right now and I play the game, HTTP requests are not enabled. It says enable via game settings, which means that I have to publish the game or what I could do because I'm smart and intelligent and also very um, hot and everything, check out my Instagram, is I need to say HTTP service, HTTP enabled is equal to true. And then I think that should do it. Yeah, there we go. The issue here, though, is that this isn't a Lua table, okay? Because Roblox uses Lua for its language, makes sense, right? However, this is a .json file, right? I'll be completely honest, I don't even know what language this is, but Lua files are in Lua. So we need to find a way to take this data and convert it into an actual Lua table. I know right now you might be looking at this and being like, oh, but this is a table, what are you talking about? Okay, you know what, what if we try and print message? data.message okay let's try this data.message okay what's gonna happen what's gonna happen nail it's gonna print nail do you know why it's gonna print nail because this isn't a lua table and so actually this is really easy we just need to say local final data is equal to uh http right json decode i think yeah json decode and then we pass it the data so this just decodes it from a json into an actual lua table and so now if i try to print final data let's just print final data for now right it prints it as an actual table. Look at that, there we go. So message is equal to success, number is equal to seven, and people is its own table. And now we can actually do whatever we want with this. So what I want this to do is I want this to continuously be checking for data. Okay, so game dot, let's say run service dot heartbeat. Basically, this will run whenever the server updates. And so then what we need to do is we need to take this, we need to copy it, and we need to paste it in here. Right now, I still want this uh, variable here. So we actually need to give this a different name. So I'm thinking something like we can be creative here. Let's just do data to final data to okay, let's just let's just do it like that. And yeah, just give it data to here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a variable called local old data, which is going to be equal to the final data. Uh, I think it's people. And here what we're going to do. So now now that we have, you know, the updated data, we're going to say if final data to dot people is not equal to old data, right? So if the data that we, you know, get at first and then we continue updating, if at some point when we're updating, we're like, oh, this new data is not the same as the old data, right? Meaning something has changed. Then what we do, okay, is we need to actually do something to the part, which I'll, I'll get to in a bit. For now, let's just print something high, whatever. And then after we do that, we just need to set the old data equal to uh, final data to dots people. Okay, that, <laughs> that that's, that's probably not good. Okay, how about instead of people, we check the number of people i think this is better if we check the number right so old final data number okay yeah so let's let's try this let's try this hopefully this will work oh there we go look at that now whenever the number actually gets updated now you know whenever it goes from like seven to eight or something this part will basically just print high Oh, wait, number of, what number of requests exceeded limit? Oh, okay, my bad. So <laughs> I, I completely forgot. There is a uh, request limit that you can do. <laughs> so like what I'm doing here is I'm basically trying to request every single tick, which probably isn't nice. So maybe we should just do like a while uh, task.waits one do okay so instead of like checking every little tick we're just gonna check every one second because like there is a limit to how much like requests you can send to the website right because the thing is otherwise you can just you can just ddos the website right because th that's what ddoses are you just send a bunch of like messages and then the website just collapses right so it is good that they actually have limits in place against that but yeah so now we know that this basically works obviously nothing's gonna really happen because well you know people don't really just travel quickly like that right i mean like you know like they're still in space they're still chilling we got a uh, we got nikolai chubb let's look this guy up i'm actually curious imagine living a life like that you just go to space just with your buddies you're just like in this pod you're just going places i respect that and let's see is the part still no 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 prints okay because this works we can't actually see it, right? The scale of, you know, people in space is pretty big, right? I mean, obviously, like, you know, people don't always just go in and out, right? It's not like that common. It doesn't update that fast. So what I'm thinking is, what if we actually do this with the ISS position? What if we create a new part, right? So I can just create another part like so. So I'll just duplicate this, right? Uh, and then I'll just call it the ISS locator. And inside of this script, we're basically going to do the same thing, except I'll, you know, give it a different link like so. And so here's what I'm thinking. Okay. So we can get the actual data. Okay. So yeah, data to find data to whatever. So all of this basically remains the same, but we don't need old data here. In fact, I don't want it to be one seconds. I want it to be like 0 0.1 seconds right now. You might be asking right now. Okay. 
what are we actually doing with this? Okay, what do you want to do with the ISS location? So here's the thing, we want to actually get both the latitude and the longitude of the ISS position. Let is equal to, so we can say final data to, actually, I'm, I'm just realizing right now, we don't even need this. So let is going to be final data, and then we could say um, ISS, it was what, uh, yeah, ISS underscore position, like so. And from here, we can just get the latitude, so dot latitude, like so. And so if I print let, what's going to happen? Oh, yeah, there we go. See? So it's actually consistently updating. That's pretty nice. And then we just do the same, but for longitude. So local long, but here instead of latitude, we're going to go for longitude. And so here's the thing. In case you don't know, the way that latitude and longitude work is that they go from a positive 90 all the way to negative 90. So what I'm thinking we do here is what if we just do some complex math and transform these numbers into a color and a size for the part, right? So we can have latitude be responsible for the color of the part and then longitude for the actual size of the part. So I can just move the part like over here just to actually have like a little separator. And so let me show you how I actually would do that. So it goes from positive 90 to negative 90. But the thing is here, I don't want any negatives, right? So we just need to make sure that the minimum number will be zero. So because the most like low it can go is negative 90. So what we need to do here is basically just add 90 to both of them. So latitude plus 90 and then longitude plus 90. There we go. And the thing is, then we need to actually get the percentage. So we need to basically take this value and then divide it by the max possible value, which is going to be 180, right? Because the max value like currently is positive 90. Because we're adding 90 here, the new max value is 180. So if we take this, just, you know, we can just put it into a bracket and then divide it by 180, that will give us effectively the percentage. It's going to give us a percentage of like how close it is to 180. So if longitude is in the direct middle, which is zero, and then we add 90, so then this turns into 90, it's going to be 90 divided by 180, which is 0.5, right? And so from here, I can just say script.parents.color, right, is equal to color3.new, and then for each color, it needs a actual value between 0 and 1, right? So 0 is the minimum, 1 is the maximum. And this is actually exactly what we're getting here. So the minimum value we can actually get here is going to be 0. And the maximum value is going to be 1, right? Because the maximum that this can be is 180, which 1 divided by 180 is going to be 1, but the lowest it can go is 0, right? And then 0 divided by anything is going to be 0. So here we can give it latitude, comma, latitude, comma, latitude, like so. And then we need to do the same thing, but for script.parents.size. And so this one's going to be a little weirder, right? But basically what I'm thinking is we just set it equal to like a new size, so vector3.new. And so what I think we could do is we can just say like something like 30. So 30, 30 is going to be the maximum, right? And then just times it by longitude, right? Like so. And also just to account for the possibility that like this might um, be zero, because I'm pretty sure Roblox doesn't allow you to set the size to zero. What we could do is we could just say like local pose is equal to this, right? And then we can just add one on top just in case, right? So we can just add one. And so then we can just say position, position, position. And so now if I run the game, what's going to happen? <laughs> oh, look at that. It's like continuously increasing. Oh, that is so cool. And actually, I'm curious, what if we actually switch it up? So maybe instead of lat, 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 we say lat, and then here it can be like longitude, right? So it's going to be lat, and then it's going to be the longitude, and then it's going to be the lat. And then for here, um, okay, how about this? Let's, uh, let's add just lat here for fun, okay? How's this going to look like? <laughs> look at that. <laughs> there you go, boys. That's the... I got so scared for a second. My bad, boys. I forgot that Anchored should be on. And then actually, I guess, um, I, like I said, we didn't do this before because it kind of gave us an error. But what if we bring back the run service thing? So dot heartbeat connect function. And then we just add a bracket here. Yeah, look at that. It's like smoothly increasing. Oh, that's so cool. We haven't actually gotten any, you know, new astronauts in space or anything, so that kind of sucks, I guess, but at least this isn't falling over anymore, so <laughs> that's good. And yeah, there you go. So hopefully a lot of the popular games like uh, what, Adopt Me, Pet Simulator, um, Blade Ball, I don't know. Yeah, so if the developers of these games are listening to this, bro, you gotta add this. I'm telling you right now. Your profits, I'm telling you right now, your profits will literally skyrocket because of this. That's, I'm, I'm making so many accidental puns here. That's crazy. I do have a course which is on sale right now. It has a 50% off coupon, which expires in like two days. So check the description, check the pinned comment, apply the coupon and buy the course and enjoy the amazing infinite value, you know? And yeah, so as always, we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.